Hello, this is Dr. Jerry Lloyd, and we're going to give you another verse on Thanksgiving. And this probably would be, to me, the definitive verse on Thanksgiving. And that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15, very short verse. You can memorize it while we're talking. It says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. There in this passage, this verse is talking about, well, the context, if we look at the verse before it, in verse 14, verse before, he says, And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. So that is the gift he's talking about, the exceeding grace of God. Now that grace is extended to believers as well as unbelievers. It's offered to unbelievers, but the unbelievers have to receive it. They have to accept it. And so that gift is offered to everybody but we do have to receive it. He says, of all the many things for which we should be thankful for, there appears to be one in particular for which we should be especially thankful because it's the unspeakable gift. It's so magnificent. And well, the verse before tells us what that gift is. It is the grace of God. Well, of course, the definitive verse on grace is Ephesians 2.8, as we've said before. He said that, that the subject is the gospel, and it is the exceeding grace of God in you that is the gift. According to Ephesians 2.8, the gift of God is being saved by grace through faith. It says this, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So that's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and it tells us that we are saved by faith, but it is the grace of God that has done what it takes to save us. This verse points out that the only thing that we can do to receive this salvation is to believe it. We must believe that we are saved by his grace, that's undeserved mercy, through faith, and that being saved from the penalty of sin is not of yourselves. Salvation has nothing to do with anything we do or anything that we commitment we might make or our uh, feeling we might have at, or any works that we do at all. Nothing, the Bible says, it's not of yourselves. Salvation has nothing to do with anything that we do other than have faith because we have come short of what is required to get to heaven. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we've sinned. Well, there's the problem. God can't allow any sin in the heaven. That's the reason that salvation is not of ourselves. He can't allow any sin. In, and then why not? Why, why can't he just overlook it and say, well, I forgive him. Go, on, go ahead and let him come in. Because if any sin entered heaven, what does sin do? It causes death. The wages of sin is death, God said in Romans 6.23. And so if there even one sin entered heaven, then there would be death in heaven and they no longer have eternal life. So God can't allow that because he loves the people that go to heaven. He loves the people that don't. And so he wants to offer everyone eternal life and offers it as a completely free gift. But we have to receive it. What do we have to do to receive it? How do you get a gift? You receive it. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the wages of sin is death, and that would be eternal death, in the lake of fire separated from God. But he gives us eternal life when we believe it, when we receive it. How do you receive it? How do you receive it? In John 1.12, God tells us, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, to them that believe on his name. How do we receive the gift of God? 
by believing on the name of Jesus. Now, what does this name mean? What is it we have to believe to believe on his name? We have to believe that he is God, he's God the Father who took on flesh, and that he, as God, came to earth, took our sins upon himself, and then he died, paid for them, came back, came back from the dead after three days so that he can offer us the gift of eternal life. Our sins have been taken care of, and therefore if we go to heaven, because we've trusted Christ and we will, then there, uh, it's absolutely free. We receive that eternal life through believing in Jesus Christ. He says down here, we must believe on his name. That means we believe that Jesus is God and that his death and resurrection paid completely for sin. So we can go to heaven because of what he did. That's a pretty unspeakable gift, isn't it? That's a pretty unspeakable gift. And, and the odd thing about this unspeakable gift is it's the gift of the gospel of grace. And what's odd about it is that although the gift may be unspeakable, as to its duration, how long, it's going to last forever. As to its scope, it's for the whole world. And the cost of it, it cost Jesus Christ his life. He died. He paid for sin. It's unspeakable what he did. It's unspeakable as far as the scope, and it's unspeakable as far as its duration. It lasts forever. We're still required to speak about it. God says in 1 Thessalonians 2.4, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. I hope you enjoy these little snippets of verses of Scripture. And this one in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. And if you like them, like us share it, and then subscribe. This is Dr. Jerry Lloyd. Thank you for watching.